Hello, I'm Clint Bowers of Brace Tool, and today I'm going to assemble the hydraulic tubing punch. Before I start, I want to explain something about the displacement or the punch piston itself. Uh, the punch piston has a weep hole in the back, which allows oil to escape out of this threaded hole in the front. Uh, that was designed for use in high temperature wells where oil expansion was causing the uh, shear screw to shear prematurely while it was being run in the well. Uh, if you choose not to have the weep hole open, it's easily plugged with a 1024 by quarter inch set screw. And you just find the hole, you can hold it up to the light and you can see the small hole in there and put the set screw into the hole on that side. Tighten it up and then it won't weep. And now we'll start assembling the tubing punch. Uh, we'll start out with the main body and we'll install the bleed screw. There's a quarter inch ball bearing that drops into the hole and then there's a screw that goes on top, on top of that. And this is uh, mainly used for bleeding the air out of the tool after uh, you've assembled it. So you screw that down until it makes contact with the ball and torque it slightly. Because it's a ball seat, it doesn't need to be super torqued in there. Okay, so we're done with this piece for the moment. Now we'll take the firing head side of things and we'll assemble. We put all the bolt rings on that are required. So we have the displacement piston itself. That o ring goes on there. We have the displacement, or sorry, the punch piston. I call it displacement piston. Punch piston. Displacement piston housing. Displacement piston. Shell chamber. And the fish neck. The o ring on the fish neck is designed to uh, create friction between the fish neck and the safety sleeve when it's in the up position. Now we'll screw that on now until it's just below the set screw hole. And then we'll take our striker and our shear pins up. Slides in there. Grease some threads and install the fish into there. At this point, before you get too far, you'll want to screw your safety sleeve up or else it will bind on the shear pin sub. So I like to leave it just to make in contact with the O-ring. Install the fish nut into the vise and screw this down. Then using the crescent wrench on the flats, tighten that into the fish neck, install the set screw, which will require you to screw your safety sleeve back in the safety position. Set screw, make sure it's making contact, tuck it in. And we can install our firing pin into the striker. It sometimes takes a little tap, so make sure it's to the bottom. There's a set screw that holds that in place as well. It's making contact. And now we can install our shear pin. Shear pin, we use quarter inch brass most of the time. And if you do have a higher pressure well, uh, you can opt for steel pin if you like, but brass is usually sufficient. You line the two holes. Then you use the hammer. Stop it in place. Want to ensure it's flush. Shear 
pin cover goes on and then we can install our shear pin housing or firing pin housing sorry Now at this point I like to tighten these two subs together. So I'll install this there. Screw up my safety sleeve a little bit to allow room for my crescent wrench to fit in there. And torque to put up. Now we'll leave the safety sleeve down making contact with this, in case it's dropped or anything, there's no chance of the shear pin getting shared prematurely. We'll install our displacement piston and our displacement piston housing. A little grease on the O-ring. Drop it into the hole. And there's a bit of friction there between the O-ring and the displacement piston housing, so I use a piece of brass just to get it started. Once the oil is down past there, I use my thumb to push it into place and I just push it down far enough that when this rubber disc is installed on top of it, the rubber disc will be flush with the top of the bottom of the hole. Now the firing or the shell chamber, we we'll take a 4570 uh, shell with an aluminum slug. It's been modified with a 22 rimfire cartridge. It drops into the shell chamber. Brass disc goes on top of it. This brass disc creates a seal so that no fluid can get in there and make your shell wet out. Now we'll install our firing head on here and once we install this on here we want to treat this like a loaded gun. We have a live uh, cartridge in the tool. Install our displacement piston housing on there. And we'll tighten those two slips together. Okay, now we're ready to install our punch, oops, or punch on our punch piston and uh, I like to use a finishing nail, it's a 17 gauge finishing nail. Uh, the head of it's a little bit larger than the hole through the, the punch itself so when you tap it into place it actually flares up that head and holds on there nice and tight. Spin on your pin. We'll install the pin seal screw into the punch piston. Pin seal screw creates a seal between the piston and the uh, housing. Doesn't allow the uh, oil to seep out. When we install this, you'll notice that there's quite a standoff there. The pin is too long, so we just take a good look at it. Cut that off to the length it needs to be. And because it's loose, it's uh, a smaller OD than the hole that it's going into. We'll have to flare that out somewhat to stop it from falling off and spinning. So we'll just take that on the vise and use that. friction. When you install it, it stays firmly in place. You want it to stay firmly in place and not spin on your punch piston. So it's nice and solid. You don't want to torque on it because it's just a small pin, but you want to make sure it's not spinning. Now we'll put a little grease on the O-ring. 
And we'll install that into the body itself. And we'll face the body with this uh, shear pin screw hole facing you. Then you align the shear pin screw hole on the piston with that hole. Line them up so when you put it in, it fits. And that should push down to the bottom of the hole so that it's sitting below the body itself and not sticking out. And we'll take our shear screw and install it into the body. It's a brass shear screw so it doesn't need to be super torqued in place or else you'll have issues getting it out. Um, it's just designed to hold this piston in place while it runs in the hole and it shears off. So once it's in there, you feel it bottom up, bottom out in the bottom of that hole, you stop. It's good. It's in there, you can kind of see the brass sticking into that hole. At this point, we'll fill the tool with oil. We use ATF here. Uh, you can use motor oil or mineral oil or any kind of suitable oil that you choose. Uh, the thicker the oil, the, uh, the slower it will uh, bleed the air out when you're doing your uh, bleeding your air out. So when we fill it, we want to fill it up to uh, about a quarter of the way up the threads, so that when you install your firing head in there, it, uh, it creates a bit of pressure so that we can turn the tool upside down and bleed all the air out. You don't want air in the, the tool when you run it uh, because air will expand with heat and it will cause uh, your shear screw to shear prematurely and then you'll have a tool failure. Okay, so you'll feel the oil start to pressure up on there and that's when you want to stop. You take the tool, turn it upside down clamp it in the vise and you open your bleed screw hole. You just undo the screw and it starts to allow the oil to run out of the tool. And I like to let it sit for five minutes like this just to make sure all your oil gets to the top, or air, sorry, gets to the top of the oil. Uh, but for this demonstration we'll just move past this. As you can see, as I turn it in, the oil is bleeding out and you may see air bubbles once in a while come out of there indicating that there's still air in the tool. So, uh, Best case scenario you want to see constant oil flow out of this as you screw it in. And once you get it screwed in all the way and tightened to the bottom you want to close your uh, bleed screw immediately. So we close our bleed screw, just snug tight as it's a ball seat. And then we'll tighten the body onto the firing head. Typically when you're running this, you put a blind box or something in there to jar down onto your collar stock or whatever you're firing off of. The tool is ready to run in the well. So when you carry it to the well head to put it on your tool string, you leave the safety sleeve in the down position so that if you drop this tool, there's no chance of you firing or your shear pin shearing prematurely. Once you're screwed onto your tool string, tightened up, and zeroed at the wellhead and ready to pull it into your lubricator, you'll screw this back up. This is where the O-ring comes into play. It creates friction between these two pieces so that it doesn't back off when you're running them out. If you're going to use a wrench on here, be very gentle because you'll crush it and it won't function properly on the threads because it's very thin. Uh, run it in the well, jar down to shear your pin. The piston shoots down into the oil chamber, creating pressure, driving the punch piston out into the tubing wall, driving the punch through the tubing, and then you have a hole in your pipe. Thank you.